Have you ever wondered why some hostages or victims of abuse sometimes end up sympathizing with their captors or abusers? This puzzling phenomenon is known as Stockholm Syndrome, named after a 1973 bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden, where hostages shockingly defended their captors against the police. But it's not just confined to hostage situations. This concept has been applied to abusive relationships as well, shedding light on the complex dynamics at play. The power imbalance, where the abuser maintains control through manipulation, fear and isolation, provides a fertile ground for Stockholm Syndrome to take root. It can serve as a survival mechanism, with victims developing positive feelings towards their abusers to minimize harm. Yet, it's important to note the individual variability. Not all victims develop Stockholm Syndrome, as factors such as personal psychology, the nature of the abuse, and relationship dynamics all play a role. Stockholm Syndrome, a fascinating yet complex psychological response, offers insights into how humans adapt to survive even in the most distressing situations. So, how do we recognize Stockholm Syndrome? There are some telltale signs. To understand this phenomenon, we dive into the heart of the matter, the key signs of Stockholm Syndrome in abusive relationships. Firstly, there's defending the abuser. This can be perplexing to outsiders, as the victim may deny or minimize the abuse. They may even make excuses for the perpetrator's behavior, defending them against any criticism. It's as if they've become the abuser's advocate, despite the harm they're enduring. Next, there's a sense of responsibility for the abuse. The victim might internalize the blame, believing they have somehow caused the abuser's anger or violent actions. This self-blame can create a vicious cycle, making the victim feel trapped in the abusive situation. Then, we have emotional dependence. Despite the abuse, the victim may feel a strong emotional attachment to the abuser. This bond can lead to anxiety or fear at the thought of leaving the abuser. It's a paradoxical situation where the source of harm also becomes a source of comfort. Lastly, there's identification with the abuser. This is where the victim starts to adopt the abuser's values, beliefs, or even language. They may mirror the abuser's behavior and perspectives, almost as if they are losing their identity in the process. It's essential to note that these signs may not be present in all cases. Stockholm Syndrome is not a one-size-fits-all phenomenon. It's a complex interplay of individual psychological factors, the nature and severity of the abuse, and the dynamics of the relationship. These signs, while not exhaustive, can provide some clues to understanding Stockholm Syndrome in abusive relationships. However, it's crucial not to jump to conclusions or make assumptions. Recognizing these signs is just the first step. It's equally vital to approach the situation with empathy, respect, and a focus on the safety and well-being of the survivor. Recognizing Stockholm Syndrome is important. But there are some crucial considerations we must bear in mind. Firstly, it's essential to remember that Stockholm Syndrome is not a recognized mental health diagnosis. It's a term that describes a specific set of behaviors and feelings that can arise in certain high-stress situations. It provides a framework for understanding the emotional responses of some individuals in abusive relationships, but it's not a condition that can be diagnosed or treated in the same way as a psychiatric disorder. The second key consideration is the importance of focusing on survivor safety and support. The primary concern in any abusive situation should always be ensuring the safety of the victim and providing the necessary support for their recovery. Identifying signs of Stockholm Syndrome can aid in understanding the victim's experiences and emotions, but it should never take precedence over their immediate safety and well-being. Thirdly, we must avoid victim blaming. It's easy, though misguided, to interpret the behaviors associated with Stockholm Syndrome as evidence of the victim's complicity or weakness. Such interpretations are not only incorrect, but also harmful as they shift the blame from the abuser to the abused. Stockholm Syndrome is a potential response to extreme stress and manipulation, not a reflection of the victim's character or choices. Lastly, the significance of seeking professional help cannot be overstressed. If you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship and displaying signs of Stockholm Syndrome, it's crucial to reach out to a mental health professional. Therapists who specialize in trauma and abuse can provide the necessary support and guidance.
helping the survivor to navigate their feelings and experiences and embark on the path to recovery. Understanding Stockholm Syndrome isn't about blaming the victim, but shedding light on the complex dynamics at play in abusive situations. By approaching this phenomenon with sensitivity, respect and a focus on survivor safety, we can better support those affected and contribute to a more informed and compassionate dialogue around abuse and its aftermath. It's time to summarize what we've discussed about this complex psychological phenomenon. Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological response seen in some hostages or abuse victims, where they develop a sense of trust or sympathy towards their captors or abusers. Named after a bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden in 1973, this phenomenon has been observed beyond just hostage situations, extending to abusive relationships as well. The context in which Stockholm Syndrome emerges is characterized by power dynamics. Abusers maintain control through manipulation, fear and isolation, creating a complex environment where Stockholm Syndrome symptoms might surface. It can act as a survival mechanism, helping the victim adapt to the abusive situation and minimize the risk of further harm. However, it's important to note that not everyone in such situations develops Stockholm Syndrome. Individual psychological factors, the nature and severity of the abuse, and the dynamics of the relationship all play a role. Signs of Stockholm Syndrome in abusive relationships can include defending the abuser, feeling responsible for the abuse, developing emotional dependence on the abuser, and identifying with the abuser. The victim may deny or minimize the abuse, make excuses for the perpetrator's behavior, and even mirror their values, beliefs, or language. However, it's crucial to remember that Stockholm Syndrome is not a recognized mental health diagnosis, but a descriptive term for a specific set of behaviors and feelings. Recognizing potential signs of Stockholm Syndrome should not overshadow the need to prioritize the safety and well-being of the survivor. It's harmful and dismissive to attribute Stockholm Syndrome to the victim's personality or actions. The focus should always remain on the abuser's responsibility for the abuse. If you suspect that you or someone you know might be experiencing Stockholm Syndrome, it's crucial to seek professional help from a therapist specializing in trauma and abuse. Approaching Stockholm Syndrome with understanding and respect and prioritizing survivor safety is essential to addressing the harmful dynamics at play in abusive situations.